What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TGB Ravens Media, bringing Ravens content every single day. If you want to see daily Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Now, obviously, yesterday we uploaded the first segment of the recent Trust the Bank podcast. The second segment, the final segment, will be out tomorrow, and then we will be going live on Wednesday night. But if you want to check out those segments, check out the podcast platforms. You know, you can see them, you know, down here. Trust the Bank, Baltimore Ravens podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that type of thing. But that's it for the intro. You know, as always, it is Monday. And what does that mean? It is Mock Draft Monday. You know, we only have three of these until the draft happens. And so it's getting down to the wire. You know, we're getting more information out about certain prospects. We're getting a better sense of what the draft could look like. You know, we just saw a big trade between the Eagles and the Saints today. The Saints getting two first round picks, you know, in exchange for, you know, a lot of other picks, Um, obviously not Ravens related. I'm not going to analyze it or anything, but you know, we're starting to see those types of things. So when I do this draft, I'm still doing a no trades seven round mock draft, but guys, as always, let me know what you guys are thinking about the picks. I'm going to put the picks in the comment section of this video, but I strongly recommend don't look at the comment until I make the video because I talk about why I make those selections. And if you disagree with selections, please tell me. If you think, hey, I got this guy in the fifth round. I think he's a steal. I, he plays corner. He plays safety. Whatever it is, I think you should look at him. I will look at him. There are players that you guys suggest all the time, and I check out every single one of them. And sometimes I'm able to find them in the draft. Sometimes, you know, unfortunately, they they get taken before they're available. So I I like to see what you guys are thinking. Hey, you should go after this, this wide receiver, this running back, this corner, this edge, this linebacker, all those positions. I like to see what you guys are thinking. So please let me know. Um, what your mock drafts are and, and who you guys think I should draft. But sorry for the long introduction. Let's get into it. You know, starting off at pick 14, most of the players that most of you guys are always suggesting, you know, we're, we're gone. Uh, there weren't any corners available. There weren't uh, really any offensive linemen that I valued high enough. And so I had to go with a guy that I draft all the time. I went with George Karlaftis. Guys, he's not my number one prospect for the Ravens to draft, but out of the players that I saw that were available, and I will say Jermaine Johnson was gone for all the people that see I drafted Carl Laftis, and they're like, well, you should have taken Jermaine Johnson. He was gone. I couldn't draft him. Uh, I, I went with I went with Carl Laftis because I, I think edge rusher is a bigger need for the Ravens than defensive tackle um, for a guy like Jordan Davis. I'm okay with drafting a defensive tackle, but um, I would much rather go edge in the first round than uh, you know, the interior of that defensive line. And I've talked about Carl Loftus a ton of times. Joshua and I just did a segment on Carl Loftus versus Jermaine Johnson. So, um, you know, if you want more thoughts on him, you know, you can go check that out. But getting into the second pick, pick 45, I went with linebacker Christian Harris. Christian Harris coming out of the University of Alabama. He is a Mike linebacker. So with this draft selection, my assumption is that – Pat. actually, I'm sorry – Christian Harris is a Will linebacker. I don't know why I said Mike linebacker. Um, I apologize for that. Um, Patrick Queen will shift over to Mike linebacker. That That's what I was trying to say. Sorry about that. Um, they tried it earlier in the year last year. And Patrick Queen has talked about how he's played in, in both of the spots. Never, It's not one thing where it's like, oh, he only plays in the Will spot or he only plays in the Mike spot. They can move around and stuff like that. But Patrick Queen can take on that more... Mike centered um, linebacker positioning, but he can obviously play, you know, will and switch in and out. But I like Christian Harris is a good depth piece. Some of the other players that I really liked um, were gone. And Christian Harris, I think is a really solid guy. We've done well drafting out of the university of Alabama. Alabama produces the most pro ready prospects every single year. So bringing another guy that can come compete in our linebacking core, I think is very valuable to this team. Now, pick number 76, I don't know if I've ever drafted this player before. I've always really liked him, so I don't know if I've gotten to talk about him. I drafted Marcus Jones, cornerback out of Houston. Marcus Jones is a really interesting prospect. First of all, he can be a slot cornerback. We need a slot cornerback. He's a terrific man coverage slot corner. What do the Ravens like to do? They like to play man coverage. What do the Ravens need? They need a slot corner. He fills those needs. The other thing that he can do is he can be a, he can be a return man. He can, he can absolutely do that, and I think that's very valuable to this team because Devin DuVernay, we could allow him to become the player on offense that we need him to be, and I believe he can be that guy, that that prototypical wide receiver um, that doesn't have to get super tired out on special teams even though he's a terrific returner. Marcus Jones could come in and, and be a fantastic returner, 
for the Ravens and also be a very solid, um, you know, special teams player. Because after he returns a kick, you know, he doesn't have to go out and play corner. Whereas Devin Duvernay, after he returns a kick, he's asked, oh, man, you're tired. You can't go play wide receiver. Um, so I, I do really like Marcus Jones and, you know, I, I don't want to say his game is similar to Tyron Matthew, but Tyron Matthew, when he started his career, he was a guy that could return kicks and play out of the slot and play a little bit of safety. Marcus Jones can return kicks. He can return punts and he could be a great ball, great ball skill man coverage corner that can get some interceptions for the Ravens defense. So I really like Marcus Jones. I was surprised that I don't think I've drafted him before, but I, I'm a big fan of his game. So I do really like him. Um, so I was happy that I got him pick number 100. I went to the offensive side of the ball. I went with an offensive tackle. I do believe Ronnie Stanley is going to come back and he's going to be a very good player. I really like Morgan Moses, but it's never a bad thing to have depth. So I went with Rashid Walker offensive tackle out of Penn state. He can play on the left side. He can play on the right side. He's just a developmental guy to put in behind our guys as a depth piece to where if something unfortunate does happen, we can have more depth on the offensive line because that's always needed. Pick number 110. I talked about it earlier. I'm not against drafting defensive tackles, guys. I, I am a fan of it. I think we do need depth there. Now, whether or not it's a first-round pick, I don't think it should be. So I went with Matthew Butler, defensive lineman out of the University of Tennessee. He can play, you know, kind of across the, the line. He can play a little bit of three-tech. He can play a little bit of five-tech. And, and that's something that the Ravens can use. You know, we have Michael Pierce, who's a nose tackle. We have Justin Matabike, who can play you know, a little bit on the inside. He can play a little bit of three tech and stuff like that. But, you know, having just another guy that we can sub in and out um, on different packages would be very valuable to this team, you know, because we don't know exactly what we have on the defensive side, out, on the defensive line outside of Justin Matabike um, and Michael Pierce. That's about it. You know, we do have other players. I'm not counting them out. I like Broderick Washington. Um, but, you know, Matthew Butler could be another guy that can compete there and maybe, maybe earn a, you know, a, a rotational job. Pick 119, I know you guys are a big fan of this guy. Went with Kobe Bryant, cornerback out of Cincinnati. The, the Batman and Robin, you know, counterpart of Sauce Gardner. Kobe Bryant won the, you know, I think it's the Jim Thorpe Award. I can't remember exactly what it is, uh, but it's the best cornerback in the country. And he won it last year. You know, he's a man-to-man -man corner. He's got good size. He's got decent athleticism. He's not as athletic as a guy like Sauce Gardner, but he's decent with his athleticism. And, you know, he can come out and he can play, you know, on the outside and he can be a good piece for this defense because we need depth. We need depth. That's the biggest thing we need. We only have a, like four cornerbacks on the roster. I went with Marcus Jones to be our slot guy. And then we can have Kobe Bryant being our depth piece behind Marlon, behind Marcus. If they get tired, Kobe Bryant can come in. You know, if we need to go into nickel, we can have Kobe Bryant come in, those types of things. I, I do love Kobe Bryant. I haven't drafted him too much because I've gone with other players in different spots, but I do really love his game. I think he could be a really solid player for the Ravens. Next pick, let's see what number it is. Pick 128, one with Sterling Weatherford, one of my favorite sleeper prospects in this draft class. University of Miami, Ohio. He's a safety, but this dude is built like a truck. He's six foot four. Heavy hitting, strong safety. He's a playmaker. He can go after the ball. He can make big hits. He can force fumbles. And he is a guy that I think could eventually become the strong safety that the Ravens need. You know, he can play in the box. He can play, you know, on the outside, you know, over top like a Chuck Clark. And I think at early points in his career, he can be like an Anthony Levine. Anthony Levine was drafted as an outside linebacker for the Ravens. He ended up switching over to safety, but he was a special teams player. Sterling Weatherford can be a special teams player that can run with his athleticism, make big hits on special teams. And if need be, we come out in nickel packages. He could play in the box as a safety, but he's got the size of a linebacker. And I really like that versatility that he can bring. So Sterling Weatherford is a guy to keep your eye out for. Um, in this draft class, guys like him, you know, at his size at the safety position, you know, guys like Isaiah Simmons and things like that. Obviously, Isaiah Simmons, freak athlete. I'm not saying he's Isaiah Simmons, but it's a value at a position and you don't have to use a first round pick on him. Where like a guy like Isaiah Simmons, where you don't know, really know exactly where he fits. It's like first round pick. OK, you know. It's a, he's not a gadget guy. That's not the best way of explaining it, but it's a guy that can do a lot of different things, but he may not excel at one particular thing. Getting a guy like that in the fourth round, 
I think is valuable. A guy that you can hone in and maybe the Ravens say, hey, we want you to be a pure safety. They can do that. Or maybe they draft him and say, hey, we want you to be a, you know, a, a sub linebacker safety hybrid, you know, that plays a lot on special teams. They can mold him into that. He's a guy that can be molded to fit whatever spot the Ravens see fit. So I really like Sterling Weatherford. Next pick, pick 139, went back to the offense. I went with Luke Fortner. He's a center. The Ravens need to draft a center. Now, I'm not saying that I'm against Patrick McCarry. I'm not against Tristan Colon Castillo. However, the Ravens do need some depth at the center spot because McCarry could potentially be a depth piece for the outside. Maybe a tackle gets hurt. Patrick McCarry may have to step outside, and then all of a sudden we need depth at the center spot. Luke Fortner, center out of Kentucky, played in the SEC. I don't. There's not a lot that I have to say about center. We do need um to know our future at center. And we, I think we should draft one. And I know a lot of people want Tyler Linderbaum in the first round, but I didn't get him. So I went, okay, we got to get a center at some point. So I went with him. Pick 141. I went with my favorite tight end in this draft class. I've talked about him before. I talked about him on live stream. I went with Jalen Wittermeyer out of Texas A&M. Jalen Wittermeyer is a pass catcher. The best comparison that I can make coming out of college is Mark Andrews, a guy who, Struggles in the run blocking, but he's used as an offensive weapon at his school. Wittermeyer can go out there. He, he runs good routes. He's got great hands. He's a playmaker with the ball in his hands. That's what the Ravens need because we have Mark Andrews. We have Nick Boyle. We need that third tight end. We absolutely need that third tight end. And the Ravens have shown that they can get tight ends to learn how to block. Mark Andrews did not come in as a blocker. Last year, he was one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL, as long alongside being the best pass catching tight end in the NFL. The Ravens can work with tight ends, and Wittermeyer is the best pass catching tight end in this draft class, and he has better size than a guy like um, Chigo out of um, you know University of Maryland because he's only about six foot two. Wittermeyer is six foot four. He's got decent size. He's not prototypical six 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 seven like you may like to see, but six four is viable. And he's about two hundred fifty five pounds. I love Jalen Wittermeyer out of Texas A and M. One of my favorite sleeper prospects in this draft class. Next up is the final pick in this draft class. You know, I was looking at guys. You know, you guys know that I like to draft. You know, a returner, and typically I do that as a wide receiver or running back. However, since I did end up drafting Marcus Jones early in the draft, I was like, ooh, I guess I don't really need a, a Bo Melton or a, I thought about Tyler Beatty, you know, out of University of Missouri. So I was like, okay, I still want a wide receiver though. And so I was looking at the wide receiver, wide receivers available. There were some guys that I do like, but I ended up falling in love with, or I, I've already really liked him, but I ended up picking Tyquan Thornton, wide receiver out of Baylor, good size, that's what the Ravens need. He's a he's a vertical threat, big play guy. I think the Ravens need that. Now, the, the real question about that is whether or not the Ravens would use that. That's completely besides the point. I do think the Ravens need that type of player on their offense. They have Hollywood who, yes, he's a burner. He's got speed. But jump ball situations, he's not your guy. It's nothing against him. That's just not his style. Tyquan Thornton has the size to be able to go up and get it alongside good athleticism that can allow him to do that. I'm not saying he's better than James Prochet or better than Tylen Wallace, but he's got better size than them. So he could be used as the Miles Boykin substitute so that we don't have to watch Miles Boykin, you know, anymore. That's kind of my thoughts on it. But guys, let me know what you guys think about the draft. Um, I tried to run through the picks because the Ravens have so many picks this year. So if you guys want more analysis, I can I can make longer videos on it. But I know you a lot of people really like these shorter mock draft videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. You know, if you guys want to let me know what you guys think, please do so. Let me know what your mock drafts are. Thank you, everybody. And I will see all of you again tomorrow with the final segment of our recent podcast.